having a, a conducive place to stay is an important part of training the mind. Having conducive people to practice with is also important. It creates a good environment. And it creates an energy that helps to carry us along, especially during the times when, if we were on our own, we'd start flagging. Our energy would start having gaps. And it would be nice if we could all have a conducive place to practice all the time conducive people to be with all the time. But it very rarely works out that way. That's why we have to learn how to create our own environment. And John Fung once noted that even though the place he stayed in Bangkok when he was teaching was not especially conducive, it was fairly noisy. It was right down in the middle of the city. The fact that he was there made it a lot easier for people to practice. But even then, the people whose practice really developed momentum were the ones who didn't depend on him totally. They were able to carry the momentum into their lives and start rearranging their lives to the extent that they could to make them a better place to practice, a better environment to practice. And a good guideline in this area is the Buddha's recommendation for new monks. How a new monk should comport himself to create a good environment to practice, a good environment both internally and externally. And the instructions are useful not only for monks, but also for lay people. The first principle is restraint of the senses, watching yourself as you look, as you listen, as you taste food, as you smell aromas, as you touch things. Why are you doing this? Which part of the mind are you trying to satisfy? As the Buddha said, when you notice that you're looking at certain details that tend to provoke lust or anger, or you're listening to certain details that provoke lust and anger. You've got to learn how to listen in other ways and look in other ways. In other words, the pro problem is not so much the things out there, it's how you relate to them, what you're going to look for. And of course, nowadays we have all sorts of media. There's the TV, there are magazines, there's newspapers, there's the internet, the internet, the internet. You have to turn these things on, you have to pick them, pick them up and look at them. So you have to ask yourself every time you do that, why? What are you looking for? Because these are the people you're hanging around with. You're picking up their attitudes, you're picking up their, their priorities. Why? This is a huge part of creating your environment right there. There's that old campaign that they said to kill your TV, as if the TV were an organism. The TV is just a series of electrodes and other whatever electronic equipment they have nowadays. Probably don't even have electrodes anymore. But it's the messages that are transmitted over them. Those are the things you have to watch out for. And your reason for wanting to turn these things on to begin with and take them in. Because if you're going to be practicing for putting an end to greed, aversion, and delusion, and you're going out there and exciting your greed, aversion, and delusion, it's like knowing that you've got to 
clean up your house, and then you go through and you trash it. And then you clean it up, and then you trash it again, then you clean it up again. This is a huge waste of time. You have to realize that every mess you make, you're going to have to clean up, so you learn how to make fewer messes. It's a part of a basic lesson we had to learn when we grew up. We've got to learn how to apply it to our minds. The second principle is knowing moderation in speaking. Watch what you say, because what you say creates a huge environment around you. The people around you pick up on it, and they will start responding to what you say. So try to create a good environment with your words. Try not to say anything that's going to, again, place a mess in your mind. Speak words that are true and beneficial and timely. It's as if you had a checklist that you held up to every word that was going to come out of your mouth. Does this sentence fit with these requirements? Is it true? Okay, then it goes to the next checkpoint. Is it beneficial? Okay, then it goes to the next checkpoint. Is this the right time and place? Only if it passes all three tests do you let it out of your mouth. Most of us aren't like that. We say things and then we realize what we've said after we've said them. It's as if we weren't really there when the decisions were being made. And for most of us, we're not. We're just half there. So you really want to be grounded in your body. The Buddha said, with relationship to the practice of restraint over the senses, that you really do want to develop mindfulness and rest on the body to have a good foundation post so that you don't go streaming out after your desire for sights and sounds and other things. And the same principle applies with your speech. Try to stay grounded in your body. You're right here, listening to the people talking to you, responding to what they have to say so it's really appropriate and it, you give all your attention to being right here, being present to what you're saying. And that way your speech becomes a part of your practice, part of your training of the mind. Sticking with the precepts is another basic principle that creates a good environment. This moves out from speech to the other aspects of your actions. Make sure you're not harming anybody. You're making sure that not only are you not lying, but you're not speaking divisively. You're not speaking harshly. You're not engaging in idle chatter. All the aspects of the, what are called the, the guidelines for skillful action. No killing, no stealing, no illicit sex, no lies, no divisive speech, no harsh speech, no idle chatter. Trying to overcome greed, overcome ill will, and trying to get your views straightened out. All of these things are important for creating the environment in which you live. All too often we're aware of when we're on the passive or receiving end of the impact of our environment. We keep forgetting that we create a lot of our environment. The energy we bring into our room, the energy we bring into our relationship the energy we bring to our job. That has an enormous impact on the environment, and then of course it gets reflected back to us. So try to be very careful in your actions, because they create your world. The fourth principle is trying to find some seclusion. Take time out. from your ordinary activities. And seclusion here, of course, means not only physical seclusion, finding a spot where you can be by yourself, but also mental seclusion, learning how to put down the affairs of the day. If 
you carry your work around with you all the time. The mind never gets a chance to rest. It's like those laborers that you should see in Bangkok. People would carry these huge bags of rice up and down the plank gangplanks for ships, bent over all the time, to the point where when they weren't even carrying them, these big bags, it was hard for them to walk straight. That's the way most of us are. If we could take pictures of our minds, we're all bent over, carrying this load, carrying that load. The mind very rarely has a chance to just stand up straight and be by itself. So you've got to do that every now and then. Remember that it's not an act of irresponsibility to put your concerns about your work aside. It's actually a wise way of husbanding your resources. So when the time comes when you really do have to pick up those responsibilities, you, you can pick them up with strength because you've rested. You've taken care of the mind. So tr try to get the mind to a place where it can just drop all thoughts about past, all thoughts about future. It's right here, right here, right here. It's not talking to itself about the past. It's not talking to itself about the future. That's a kind of seclusion. That's the beginning of the seclusion that they talk about in the descriptions of the jhanas. Secluded from sensuality, secluded from unskillful mental qualities. In other words, you bring the mind right here. You're alert, mindful, ardent in trying to abandon unskillful qualities and develop skillful ones. And that creates a kind of seclusion in and of itself. Which also carries a kind of protective energy around you. It creates an envelope. In the same way that the good karma of your actions creates an envelope around you, kind of protective cordon. There's a passage where the Buddha says, if your hand doesn't have a wound, you can carry poison and you don't get poisoned by it. If there's a wound, okay, the poison can get into the hand and you can die. And it's the same way with your actions, your state of mind. If there's a big gap that just lets everything in, you're going to get poisoned by the world. But if your actions are skillful, if your attitudes are skillful, you can walk through the world and you have a sense of being protected by your practice. You create the environment in which you live, even though all sorts of things may be happening around you that you cannot control. There's an area right around you where you do have control. Or you can have control if you make the effort to exercise it. The fifth quality is right view, which means not only appreciating the importance of your actions and understanding what the Buddha had to say about why there's stress and what can be done about it, but also realizing that it, this is the most important issue. After all, the Buddha spent 45 years talking about these topics, stress and the end of stress, because they're so important. And you have to keep reminding yourself that they are important, because otherwise it's very easy for the mind to pick up other people's priorities, what they say you should be doing with your time, or what they say you should be thinking about. But you have to realize that the influence of the world is extremely fickle. You do right and they say you're wrong, or you do something wrong and they say you're right. There's so much of that out there, and you, which means you can't take the opinions of the world as your, as your guideline. You've got to develop a right view about what's important and what needs to be done. In addition to these five qualities, it's also good to develop the the attitudes of heedfulness, sangwega, and confidence. Heedfulness is realizing there are dangers out there. There are dangers inside, too. 
The dangers outside are nothing compared to the dangers inside your own mind. Can you trust yourself to do the skillful thing even in difficult circumstances? And if you can't answer that question with confidence, saying, yes, you can trust yourself, okay, you've got work you've got to do. That's one of the scariest things in life, is realizing you can't trust yourself. There might be a series of circumstances where you start thinking in very unskillful ways. And then you'd start doing unskillful things. So you've got to develop the strength of mind that gives you the confidence that, no, you're not going to give in to unskillful impulses regardless. And you have to have the heedfulness to try to notice where in the mind are there any openings where unskillful attitudes could sneak in. You've got to work on those. And it's, in this case, it's helpful to develop that quality of sung way. You have a sense of urgency about this. Because otherwise you just keep coming back, coming back, coming back, and suffering again and again and again, and causing suffering again and again. How much longer do you want to do that? This can get pretty depressing unless you also have that sense of confidence that there is a way out. The Buddha showed that human beings are capable of straightening themselves out. We have the choice. I was reading recently someone denying that the Buddha taught that we have choices. And I can't imagine why anyone would want to say that. How could you practice if you had no choice? We've got the choice. Our problem is that we don't exercise our power of choice in the most skillful way. But it is a skill that we can master. The qualities that will allow for us to develop more mindfulness, more alertness, more discernment, so we can actually bring the mind to a state of release. These qualities are there for you to develop. It can be done. It's not impossible. All too often we place limitations on ourselves, even though other people place some limitations. The really da dangerous ones are the ones that we place on ourselves. We just can't imagine ourselves going all the way. And so we cut ourselves short. So an important attitude you need to develop is confidence that, yes, this can be done. And your life hasn't been totally bound up and tied off by other people's decisions or some of your old decisions. There's still wiggle room for freedom in there. So those are the attitudes you want to have. On the one hand, heedfulness and sanguega, to remind yourself that you don't have much time. And there's some real work that needs to be done in the mind. And then the confidence that it can be done. Underlying all this, of course, is mindfulness, the ability to keep this in mind. It's so easy to forget because other people are impinging on you and your old habits are impinging on you. So you've got to keep reminding yourself every day, okay, this is a day when you really want to be as skillful as possible. You want to create the environment that you need, because if you don't create it, nobody else is going to create it for you. Or if they do, it's only in isolated places like this that you can tap into from time to time. But you want to be able to carry it with you all the time. So that means you have to learn how to create it and generate it yourself and keep it going. And when you do, you find that there actually is more space out there for you to practice than you might have imagined. There's more space in your mind for you to practice, too.
So remember, it's up to you. The Buddha gives advice so you're not totally left alone. And you can remember there are other people who've done this, or other people who are doing this, so you're not alone. But you do have to draw on your own resources. Just keep reminding yourself of how important that is.